America. If if you drop the name Putin to the average person, and let's just say David goes on the streets as a man on the street in mm-hmm. New York, or he does in Miami. If you ask 100 people who's Putin, they're going to say what? Dictator, he's this, he's that, he's a murderer. He's going to say all this stuff about him, right? Now, you have actually interviewed with him. I don't know how many hours you guys were together. It was a project that took quite a while to do, and four of these interviews were launched. So who is Putin to you, having spent one-on-one time with him? How different is it than what we see on TV, how he's portrayed? You probably don't want to hear it, but he's a son of Russia in the sense that he has Russian interests are foremost in his mind. As would any leader in, in any country, whether it's the Philippines or Taiwan or this or that. I mean, he is, cares about his country and he serves it. That's the way he, and that's why he's, he's there, because people feel that he's there. And it's, they talk about he's, he's a tyrant, but he wouldn't stay in office in Russia. The Russia that I know, and many people would agree with this, that it, if he was a monster, which is pictured in the West, he'd be out of office because he wouldn't work. They have this indirect democracy, so to speak. The people are not happy, things are bad, the guy is out. And that's what happened to a few leaders. So on that point, you know, I, I went at it without preconceptions, like we talked about earlier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I'd heard all the stories, and of course I spoke to people who told me other things. Among them was Stephen Cohn, who became, I became very friendly with. Cohn was, the, I think, the leading Sovietologist in our country. He was studied Russia. He, he gave me, uh, point by point, all the descriptions of these murders and who possibly did them, but it certainly it would be ridiculous for Putin to have done them because the motive would have come right back on him. The narrative is so poorly constructed against him by the CIA and it's been a narrative there for, what is it, 20 years now? Mm-hmm. 20 years of lying and blaming everything on Russia. You have, to be in, you have to be a little bit more fair-minded. You have to be open to say that, is it possible that, oh, that Russia has done all this and, and we're the good guys? It's like a good versus bad scenario. It feels like a you know, John Wayne movie. It's not. We're not John Wayne. We have been trying to destabilize Russia since 1917 actually we sent an army there in 1918 19 with the, the 16 other armies to take apart the revolution Woodrow this great Democrat Woodrow Wilson sent the army then again we uh, we didn't recognize Russia till Roosevelt recognized Russia in 33 Roosevelt is the one who tried and he reached out to Stalin he met with him and he liked him and he said Uncle Joe they had fun together they laughed they, they met got, in Iran they got along and Roosevelt yeah. had a plan if he'd lived after April 45 to bring Russia into the into this grand alliance that he wanted he saw UN grand alliance it was a very strong good picture of the world England would be US China Russia it was a tragedy he died in April because Truman came in and he reversed the policy with uh, the Russia right away right away they had a horrible meeting Stalin was sent, felt that this was uh, the opening was over and of course Stalin is not I'm not saying he's, a, he's he was a tyrant that was a tyrant and he was very and he was a murderer and he killed people but that doesn't change the effort that Russia made in World War II and the sacrifice they made and how they helped us too so you have to balance the good and the bad the people who hate Russia of course point to Stalin as the most evil man of all time worse than Hitler so they make a whole scenario about him but they ignore what the Russians contribution was to World War II and Stalin frankly held that country together at that time he was a tough guy but uh, you, you sometimes you have to lie in bed with people like that to uh, to uh, get what you need uh, listen I spent uh, I'm limited I spent uh, four trips maybe 30 hours with a man so and the result you should see it I hope you see it it's called uh, the Putin interviews it's four hours long he answers these questions that we're dealing with today Ukraine foremost in his mind at that point this was 2000 right after 14 this was 16 area and he, he tells me the whole story from his point of view even down to who's firing who who are the people who are firing shots at Maidan it's not it's not uh, pro-Russian forces because they're firing from buildings occupied by the protesters it's people who are sni- snipers who are firing at the crowd killing both policemen and and protesters that's the whole point. You cre- it was like the same thing that happened in Venezuela back uh, around that time. That's a CIA technique. Color revolution, then you, f- then you have the violence. The violence breaks out. S- somebody's killing somebody, but you kill from both sides. You create the, the, this disturbance. 
and they killed a lot of uh, cops, they killed protesters, and that, so who did it? Who was firing from those buildings? There was lots of stories about the neo-Nazi gangs that were coming into Kiev from the west of Ukraine. It's most likely them. I mean, it probably was them. It may have been some foreign mercenaries too. So there was all that violence is what creates that mood for, for change. So they throw the president out illegally. They, they don't have an election. They, they, we install this guy, uh, whoever he was, uh, Victoria Nuland is there yeah. from the State Department. She's the leader of the neocon faction and the American ambassador, we got the recordings. They're talking about getting rid, and she even says the EU, because the EU wants to do it more legally, you know. Frankly, France and Switzerland were playing a role here, and Germany were playing a very important role in trying to make this a transition that was democratic, because they were gonna have an earlier election. Didn't happen because of the violence. The Nazis have much more power in Ukraine than you think. The United States denies it because they say Zelensky's a Jew and that's their motivation for saying, well, how can they be neo-Nazi? That's nonsense. Neo-Nazis were there way before Zelensky and Zelensky had no power. In fact, when he became president, he had to make a deal with them. He had to make a deal with them because they're tough people. They're not gonna, they are telling the president what to do. You cannot change the Ukraine policies. You have the United States telling you what to do, and you have the neo-Nazis telling you what to do. And what, it's, a, it's disgusting that the United States is, it doesn't mention them, doesn't talk about them, but basically condones what the, Nazi, the neo-Nazis are doing in Ukraine. That's what's sick, really sick. So when you talk about all that, Putin is talking about that. He talks about Ukraine, and he talks a lot about NATO. This was back then. For him, it's, you're putting my back against the wall. I'm going, you're pushing me. Uh, you're strangling me. We're surrounding them. We made the Baltic. Very aggressive towards them. Sweden, Finland, Poland has been. We put anti ballistic missiles in Poland. That's horrible. And Romania. And these missiles can be adapted to an offensive weaponry. And in five minutes could be in Moscow. You see, from, from their point of view, it's, it, they, are, they feel the squeeze. You put his back up against the wall, what are you doing? You're going to create a state either where. He's going to go to war and he's going to fight back and he's got the nuclear weapons to do so. They're crude weapons, but they're, they're very big, strong weapons, hypersonic missiles. We have very f refined weapons. We have, we have great weapons too, but who wouldn't want to be there in that war? It's, it's, it's not a war that makes any sense for the world. We're pushing them his, into the wall. Either that or else we'll get what we want, which is regime change. Uh, bring in some guy like Yeltsin was in 1990 who would work with us, basically cannibalize the country and allow their resources to be exploited.